All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, I just I realized I could not use. You guys just just stay there. Stay. You guys are gonna make me put you down. All right, time to go. There you go. Cry about it. What's up everybody, my name is Commander, welcome back to another episode of Art Survival Evolved, and today you can see behind me there is a basilisk, and it's trapped behind a cage of some kind. Well, I'll tell you right now, this took some heavy engineering from the original cage design, and unfortunately this is what I ended up having to come up with. This was the Ravager pin, modified heavily to the point where it's no longer a Ravager taming pin. Uh, you could definitely still tame Ravagers in here, so why not? But this will tame your other dinos for you like... Basilisk. Hopefully at least. Well, we're going to test that out. So right now, I am standing in front of it and it is attacking me. It is definitely not safe to stand in front of an, a of an actual Basilisk. But we're going to go ahead and see what happens if I throw an egg down. Will this work? Because obviously there are ways to do this otherwise. Will he eat the egg? Oh wait, they have to be fertilized, don't they? Wake up, wake up. We have a giga outside our yard. What we're looking at here is a basilisk hanging out in his little area. So what we're going to try to do is get him to eat this egg. Will he eat a giga egg? Will you eat the egg? Hey, looky, 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 there's an egg. Maybe it's not close enough. I don't know. Um, so... The video I was working on uh, just previously, uh, getting this whole video together, I realized I lost all sound. Yeah, that's right. I lost every bit of sound doing the video. Now, I could have just narrated over it, but I felt that would be a little wrong. I figured it would be better to show you what, what goes on with this uh, serpent here, I should say, the basilisk. I didn't want to just kind of narrate over what was already worked and be kind of sloppy about it this time. I wanted to go ahead and make sure it was in good quality. So first off, taming pin, absolute mistake. You cannot tame these guys in a taming pin. Why? Because the moment you lead them in, which it requires at least a behemoth gate, and then it requires at least a, you might be able to get away with a two, but I found I had to do a three by, at le, you would need at least a three by three. You need to be able to get the guy inside the pin. It has to be four high tall, but unfortunately the problem is once you do all that, you find that all he wants to do is attack, 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 and he doesn't pay attention to anything else. Will you be able to use other eggs? Could you use a rock drag egg and put it in here? Maybe, but apparently they don't like to eat when they're aggroed. So I didn't have a rock drag egg. I tried to use a giga egg. They do not even like giga eggs for some reason. You would think they'd like one of the biggest creatures eggs possible, but they don't. Also, another thing with the door frames, they can shoot right on through and they have no problem doing it. You can see right here, he's shooting through like nothing. So, Using the taming pin, absolutely a 100% dumb idea. Just forget the idea of using a taming pin. Uh, so we're pretty much on to how to tame the guy. Get some fertilized rock track eggs. The only way to do it is remember they have to be fertilized. Get a buddy and make sure that you are basically having him drop the egg while you run and lead it around. Let, let the buddy throw down the eggs because if you're running from this thing, I mean, you can see how fast he is with me. He's going to run you down so you have no time to drop the egg. So what you're going to want to do in that case then is make sure that your buddy is putting down the eggs. And this is something else. Do not drop them from the inventory of your dino. They have got to come from like your buddy, for example. If you're trying to tame something and your buddy is the one dropping the eggs, he is going to get the taming effectiveness. If it's dropped from like a raptor or something like that, the raptor would technically get the taming effectiveness. And since it's not a real player, you will not get the taming effectiveness so do not drop it from an animal that you are riding your mount do not drop it from that drop it from your own inventory that is what you have to do so after you've dropped the eggs and you've tamed it and you've made sure they're uh, fertilized rock drag eggs 
Uh, now here's the fun part. Uh, it takes at least 10 to tame a 150. Lower levels obviously better. This is in a times four server, so it would take even less, like two or three eggs. Uh, but we didn't even tame it here, obviously. So 10 eggs on an official rated server. So that would be what the number of eggs you'd have to do. Not too bad actually to get a good 150, right? Well, let's look at the health stats here. Health stats, uh, I've had two of these guys so far. Uh, when I did the re-record, obviously I have a different basilisk because I killed the last one because I didn't want it. And this guy has 9,000. Uh, 625 health. The other one had 10,000 health, so it had a really good health stat. The other one, I believe, had a much better melee. I think it was all the way up to 355 versus this guy. Yeah, this guy hits from much lower. And his biggest and most powerful weapon is his poison attack there for the 320 and then the, the constant 10% damage. Now, if you notice, he does rapidly hit very quickly, so he is a fast attacker which does compensate kind of like how a raptor is doesn't hit hard but hits very rapid and very often which means you can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time even though you don't do as much that means though that his base melee is going to be low and so you're going to have to pump it up some or rely on the poison attack from range until at least they get in close but that's that's a whole nother story uh the basilisk itself is pretty fast i wouldn't even worry about that weight you can see the weight stat this is a 154,000 pounds of weight a great carrier for anything. This would be great anywhere on the map. And I was is my hair flicking back right now. I can't tell. I think my hair is flicking back in the wind. Uh, but anyway, back to the back to the story here. Um, so what you're gonna do is just you can use it for a good pack mule. Movement is already really good. I couldn't imagine making this guy faster. It'd be really really fun to see this guy fast. Um, obviously food, stamina, I don't even think he's really hardly using any stamina. Yeah, he doesn't use much stamina while sprinting, you can see hardly anything. I mean, only about 20 when I did all that, and it looks like even the poison breath. The poison breath is the main use of the, of the stamina, and it doesn't use too much when he does it, so he can do this repeatedly for a long time. Uh, they do like to climb over about three high structures. Now, it will have some difficulty on the threes, but uh, four high structures, it cannot climb over. You can see right here, I'm about to try and climb over this wall, maybe. Obviously, can't climb over the four. Can, can I get over the three? I have managed three, but three can be difficult in itself. Obviously, uh, one high structure, not a big deal, although it looks like I'm having trouble just getting over this. Yeah, wow. Oh, wow, I can't even get over this. That's... That's something. So, I'm having trouble even getting over one high structures in some cases. So, he is a bit glitchy. Not going to want to climb over a lot of big stuff. But, what else can you do with this guy? I mean, he, you know all his stats at this point. What else can you do? Well, you can obviously right click for the poison. And you can see with the plus, it will kind of auto track on its target. So, let's say we're going to spin around here. And we know there's a copy somewhere over there. See, it kind of tries to lead... And notice how I wasn't necessarily aiming for it, but yet it targeted the guy for me anyway. Uh, it will try and attempt to lead the target. If you point the target at like, like a Paraser, it's going to try and lead the target just like a Poison Wyvern. Essentially, it is a Poison Wyvern just with no wings. So, what else? Well, you have your left click, which is your obvious attack. But then the really fun one, the burrow. Now, you can burrow down, and if you wanted to dismount right now, you can dismount. And now it's like that kind of hidden, but although you can see it, but it basically saves a lot of space. Although, if you want it, this thing to unbury itself, because that's the only way to mount it, because you can see right now I cannot mount it. I can access this inventory, though. So you have to tell it to unbury itself in order to get back on. Now, once you are riding it, you can see there was a cooldown. Bury is on cooldown. You had to wait a, a moderate amount of time to be able to bury yourself again. See, it took about that long to bury myself again. And once I am buried, though, you can see I can move around. It looks like when he hits... Okay, so he can move under rocks and debris, but if you hit a foundation, he cannot clear the foundation. He cannot burrow under. So, if he hits a foundation, well, you're going to come up and you're going to expose yourself really, really bad. But, again, they're probably going to see you coming when they see all the dirt flicking around. Can we go under this rock? Okay, we can't go under that rock. We can go over some of his, under the smaller ones. 
kind of like whatever you can traverse on top you can traverse on bottom and you can see i'm kicking up a lot of dust it's tremors all over here so once you come out i don't believe there's an attack we need to try that we need to see if there is a burst attack like when i click to cut will it kind of like burst down and attack something and you can see even that doesn't seem to move lose much stamina when you do something similar to that uh they are not friendly with dillos at all uh, that is something that i have found And once you're under, you cannot seem to get out. If I stop, nothing. The only way to come out is to hit space bar. So, to get out, space bar. So, well, we have all the movements and everything. Is there anything else really good about it? Um, not really. That's about it. That's kind of the end with this guy. C is a roar. And that's about all they can do. Can you breathe them? That's a question, right? I've got a basilisk. Can I breathe my basilisk? Well, let's find out. This does have, in fact, a gender. So let's get another basilisk. Behavior, enable wandering. It, oh, cool information. Allow AI special attack, which means he can shoot his poison. Enable turret mode. This thing can go into turret mode. With a tanky one, you could leave it there, sitting there, soaking damage while it shoots poison back at its opponent. Obviously, poison does have a limited range, so you will eventually, and also, it's very to avoid at a distance, so it might not be too good at a distance, but at close range, you could really use it. Change to ignore whistle group, disable ally looking. Oh, well, that's all normal stuff, right? Uh, enable wandering. Behavior, enable wandering. So, let the Ewing begin. So any minute now, this guy is on wander. Well, they wander on their own because they're not breeding at all. Yeah, they're on wander. So it does not look like you could breed them. Unfortunately, no baby basilisk, right? Well, there is a mod out there actually. I saw it recently, and it uh, it's pretty cool. It makes a mod where they can pop out babies. So. Uh, you might want to try it if you want to, but pretty much that's where it ends. It harvests meat. It doesn't harvest anything else, so you can't, like, harvest a rock with it. But it can harvest meat, and that's about it. That's that's where the story of this guy kind of ends. Turret mode. We could put him in turret mode real quick to see what that does. We'll go put him in turret mode down here real quick. All right, Basilisk, do your stuff. Obviously, adjust its targeting range to get a better turn rate, uh, get a better aiming on him. But you can see targeting him, firing the stuff, poisoning him while it's tracking him. You can see, and you can see about how 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 fast it fires. It doesn't fire too fast, and it looks like when you're not riding, it does not do near the damage it normally does. So letting the poison thing do it on its own versus you doing it, two different things. Because if I were to hit it, well, it would be a lot higher. So, all right, guys, what do you think of the Basilisk? Is it any good? I think it's pretty cool, actually. But uh, I see it more of a weight carrier in the fact that it has so much weight, which I think was the main intention. And it's a very fast, strong mount, so it's good about getting around. But unfortunately, with like the Aberration map, it might not be able to transition. I don't know. I haven't taken it onto the Aberration map. But as far as terrain-wise, it doesn't do too bad. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you learned something about the Basilisk here. If you didn't, well, I'm sorry. You must not have been paying attention. Or you must have already known all this. So, if either case, I apologize for not being able to teach you anything new. Uh, otherwise, you guys take care. And I'll catch you next time.